we had who was on the other one? Uh, downtown property inventory review. Do you bring that? Yeah, so uh, here is your copy. Or did you have a copy earlier? I have a copy earlier. Oh, okay, very good. Yeah, I do have a copy. Yep. I'm so sorry. Um, okay, and then we'll review this. We don't have to do that. Can I? Oh, can I have it? Oh, yeah, Kim, I gave one for you. Uh, I'm okay. sorry, Rob. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's not that many, and we don't have a lot to work with either. It's not like it's hundreds and hundreds of buildings. All right, that's uh, we'll we'll have some time. I'll look into this list and stuff. And um, but with this list, I guess one of the questions that I will want to ask is, I know that you were answering some of those things about how. I think a lot of what you're saying is pretty much how we all feel about it would be really cool to have them full. It would be really nice to do, you know, different things. It would be nice to not have those nonprofit buildings in there, but we got to work with what we have today. Yeah. And and so what we have today, um, I personally don't feel like unless it's not like what you're town can do for you but what you can do for your town. And I think this is one of those cases, if people really want to invest here, they're going to have to do something themselves. And now everybody is meant to be a business owner. Otherwise, we'll have businesses out of the what do right now. And so that's just my opinion. And, and I think, um, you know, like I said to you, I feel it for business owners because especially they're struggling sometimes and they're dealing with things that they have to make sure that they know how to make some type of income. And if you are not able to make that revenue, you're not able to have that business. Mm -hmm. And so you have to provide things that, and we cannot provide money for them to make money. And that's just my, you know, um, my theory. I think that um, if you're going to make it work, um, it just takes someone with real hard to do it and the finances available to do it. Um, so, and I think a lot of that speaks for uh, what makes and who buys the property too. You have to have a, a good amount of money to be able to invest. Um, but we'll look at the inventory. Thank you, Amanda, for doing this. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, all right. Um, Downtown property inventory review. Do you want to look into it, or do you? I think well, I mean, walking through really helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, to have a better idea. But um, like I said, I, I kind of see it as taking baby steps. You know, just mm -hmm. continually working towards a goal, and uh, eventually you can crawl, and eventually you can walk. So um, I, I really. The way I digest things, I try to look at the overall picture and then put together, first of all, a vision. You know, what is the vision? What do we want it to look like in the end? And um, and then devise a plan to get there. And I think before you can do that, you have to have some critical questions answered. And I feel like people in this room probably have a lot of those questions answered already. But to bring me up to speed, it would help me to know the answers to those things. And maybe we could take all of those um, answers back and correlate that into um, you know, one form so that it's um, easier to understand the information and then start to step it off. You know? I mean, that's the way you accomplish anything. Just so everybody else in the room knows, and I, I think I had a chance to tell Kim this, but when I did this um, inventory project, I based it off from what we had available from the town records and GIS and what I could see from the outside of the building. So I did not go inside of buildings to know exactly what we have for spaces inside of our buildings because I can't just help myself to walking into every building. So um, there, I believe there's more than what's even on here. So um, right well, now... There may be less too. I think there's more. I mean, I've been told hearsay that there's more um, vacancies than what I have reported on here. And I believe... That, that what I'm being told is probably accurate information. It's just I don't have it like factually 
you know, <laughs> determined. <laughs> so I, I don't have it included. Yeah. yeah. And also I was thinking too, um, I don't know who mentioned it, somebody can take credit for it, not me, but talking about, you know, um, making some housing on these upper floors too. We need housing. Mm -hmm. you know, we really need housing in Houston throughout the whole valley. I mean, I don't know how feasible it is financial, financially speaking, you know, for investors. Um, but I do know that we have a housing crisis and it's not getting better. So. Can you share that information somehow online or somewhere? You were talking about uh, the ability to provide um, government, uh, not through the town, but Right. Through the other governmental offices right. for housing, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Can you provide some links to that on the website or something mm -hmm. like that? Maybe talk to Christine or Andrew or Amanda regarding those things because if you, we're not going to be the problem, but we're going to be the solution. Mm -hmm. And so we cannot tell a business owner going to this, and it would be nice to have a three story building, two story building when there's just no money for that. You no, know, but the ones that we do have three or two stories that aren't being used, we could look at utilizing that space so it's better used. Yeah, and, and I think some of the examples that you you mentioned, Len Radford, or mm -hmm. like that uh, that, uh, that there's a building in Joe Fortier that is doing a lot of this type of well, development. Well, he has done most of the downtown yeah. too with with yeah. rent, which they also require some other things that are that can also become because I know a lot of what he's been through in his family regarding some of the things that are, that can affect the properties after they have been finished. You know, uh, there's a lot more restrictions once you apply for this government loan to be able to kick someone out. And that was something I was mentioning before that once it's done, it's great that it's done and it's rented, but what if the building it starts deteriorating because of the tenant. Uh, do you know what I mean? So not every solution right. sometimes can be the right thing because I know mm -hmm. that a lot of the issues that they have had too is the people that they're renting to. And now yeah. there is very little that the city can do or the town will be able to do to control those. Yeah, and VHD has, has a lot of you know different innovative type of loan uh, products that they, they can work with where you're, uh, if you're building a certain amount of units, then, then there a uh, yeah, there's a percentage like that. that would be affordable, but then the rest but is market rate. But if you have that rate, percentage rent 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 yeah. to someone that is probably not the, I'm sorry, I have a child trying to get to a place. But anyhow, um, but, uh, but I do think that there is, it's really nice to provide the housing and everything else, but I'm also saying sometimes with the solutions there comes other problems. There is reasons why mm -hmm. he sells them. Every time he's finished, he doesn't keep them. And so, uh, and then they deteriorate. After all this work is done, they deteriorate, and then you end up in the same place because I'm in record too, going through the same problems of dealing with why are his buildings and some of the buildings that he did that were so pretty now falling in decay. And so those are things that we also have to look into. Let me ask you something, just before I forget. Do you know about and have you met the people at Locust over the they're in the That's old Roca. they're in the old buildings inside well where it used to be the new front of time. You probably don't know where that was. Um Yeah. So it's a group that we've um um be safe on Right. It, yeah, it was actually, it, it's a, it's kind of a, um, it, it's a, it's a lender. Uh, right. and they, they were and a you, low interest business. Yeah, loan. yeah, we reached out to them, I think. Yeah. Oh, um, they, they, they have, used to be. Not here they, in downtown you're talking about. No, or, no, or, no. Or, near near Walmart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I went in there. A couple of weeks ago, and spoke with the manager and several she, of the employees. What's their name? I reached out to them, and they yeah. never returned my messaging because <laughs> be, I wanted to. It might be yeah. worth you going back and meeting the manager. They have very specific um, things that they want to finance, mm -hmm. but for the things that qualify, they offer very low interest rate. Uh, 
They're called loco. And they yeah. work all the up and down the East Coast. Yeah, so and they, they were fortunate that they're actually based in Christian But they don't mm -hmm. make it known. The grant, you know, they the person has to go in to them okay. and make the request. And then they have some information online as well. But I think it would be a, a good connection for you. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we talked about how I felt about giving yeah, money as yeah. opposed to teaching people how to get to money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but there used to be Virginia Community Capital. That's what, That was the former name. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's how I knew yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, I think you tried to tell me about that before, and I was thinking about a completely different shopping center when you were talking to me about it. Like, it was not registering with me where you were talking about that I got to now. So the rest of the agenda, are we moving that to the next meeting? Um, I kind of wanted to talk really quick regarding the FASEC grant because we are going to be reaching out um, very close to having discussions with uh, the budget sessions, yeah. talking about uh, the money and everything else with that, and and. And just really trying to find out what are we wanting to get out of this, and is the program doing right now what it was supposed to be intended to do? Because I know for a time being, it did. For a long time, it had done, and even up to the chandelier thing, it has been great. Now, as far as like, um, I don't want to feel like we're just helping one business only. I want to be able to just. I want to be able to kind of more emphasize to now maybe our shift, maybe, you know, how can we work on the town first to make it more appealing for businesses or for people to come to, to be in the town of Christiansburg than not just looking at the front of a building and, and you know, having that business. So you're saying um, you can use it more for the overarching businesses yeah. instead of a certain yeah. number of because uh, there is a point where you may feel like you're picking losers and winners too. Well, I that. don't like um, the fact that you know there have been multiple grants received by the same organization in short periods of time. I mean, it does begin to have the look because you are <laughs> giving money to you know to certain individuals. So. Which, which ones are you referring yeah. to? Because the, the depot I know got awarded two years, but they didn't take advantage of getting any of the money. Right, and Old Town, so Barber, Old Town Barber was awarded one year, but then not awarded a second year, but did not take advantage Cottage of that Farms because of cost. Cottage right. Farms, absolutely. Cottage Farms got the first so year. Those people yeah. signed. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, that yeah. was my recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. If they get it one year, they can't. Electrical apply. supply was the other one. I yeah. think that's it, unless you can think of another one. But the electrical supply had the front the front of it, and then and then they came back for a three hundred dollar matching grant for paying. I, mean, the I can side. tell you, as a nonprofit, if you know most nonprofits, if they know they can line up somewhere every year and get a check, they're going to line up every year and get a check. Mm -hmm. Now you won't see me doing that but, from the town. Right, but the, but in previous years we haven't allowed nonprofits. It's always yes, been for just speaking in general. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're just easy speaking. free money. Right, it's low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. Right, and they're going to go there first mm -hmm. every time, especially if there's no you know not of accountability or little accountability. Mm -hmm. um, What's going on with the vet place that we we um, they put it on the market? They decided. I mean, for accountability though, with the facade grant, I mean, we do we do go through yeah. all, all, all of the that. expenses and make sure that they're matching. Kind of, uh, yeah. Understanding that right. there's not a lot of accountability. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In I my opinion, anytime you're giving taxpayer money out, you better be able to account for where it was spent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you referring to the community support grant? Yes. Okay. okay. Can you tell me about the vet thing again? Is it going to be for sale? It is on the market for sale. They, they are, they've decided not to do their satellite office there. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's what so they that gutted the inside of the building and now it's on the market. But they are mm -hmm. not going to be they're, able to use the... They will not be using the facade grant. Right. No. So we are down to two. Which are those two? The Victor's... Um, South view yeah. that we just went up there to today, three, and then actually, there were three because three vet, yeah, the vet clinic was one of the three, and so and they're now out of it because they're they're buildings on the market, and then um, 
the depot building this was the fast change in Oregon. <laughs> and I don't think the depot building is it's probably going to go forward with the movement of their there the either. Right? Yeah. Money even to do a right? yeah. So we are down, so to, down to just one. one. Just one. Yeah. Yeah. And that goes back to what I'm saying is we have $25,000 that this group gets. And we are getting $25,000 and only one person is getting the benefit. And he may apply for it later on in life, who knows. But what I'm saying is, and he it's not like he needs it really. I mean, but anyhow, that's beside the point. But now you got, you're down to one. So now the funding, because with the budget that we have, I really think that I'd rather have money for the, the roads and fixing things that we really need to. And so it goes back into the budget. Now we start with another $25,000. Wouldn't it be better if we try to do something, maybe we change shifts for just a little bit to try to figure out, can we give the money to maybe, I can tell you probably we give the money to public works to fix our front of the, the, the main road. Is that really <coughs> great? Is that right? No, oh. yeah. okay. But anyhow, but the entrances of the town or something like that, we will do a lot better things. I think people will see a difference in the entrances to the town than not seeing the $25,000 just putting back into, you know, things that are not going to make the, the town beautify the town. Yeah, and I think you had also mentioned on the last meeting that with the comprehensive plan there might be changes to some of those gateways and things that, that might be premature? Was it you that mentioned? Or, or, you know, well, we, our last comprehensive plan talked about uh, improve, improving gateways, and then um, and then I'm sure our, our, our new comp plan, will, our revised comp plan, will also talk about the importance of gateways, because it is, it is important. You know, I, like I, I, I think, about, yeah. you know, like I was telling you, giving you an example, Blacksburg. There, I don't know what they're doing with everything else in their lives, and I don't know. But and I don't look at their budget. But when I'm looking at their streets, when I'm driving through Blacksburg, I'm like, wow, that's impressive. Somebody's doing something right. They got university money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, but, I mean, but it's, it's still yeah, right. But it's it is general right. fund, but they're probably but putting. But they're yeah, right. yeah. Their budget is five times what Christiansburg does. They can do that. Yeah. Well, but or, but if yeah. they so have but flower draft. I mean, flowers doesn't cost much money. Well, we, we do flowers. I mean, at least in the downtown. I, I just don't, uh, I see that there's a benefit to that, but I don't see it being the, the business, the central business benefit. You know, for for the town, yes, I see there's a benefit, but as, as a priority for businesses, I don't think that the entrances into town would be their top priority or, or, or what their focus might be. And now that we've gotten into this, I've actually prepared some information for that conversation. Okay. If, if that's something I that have we, time we for want that. to go, go into today. <laughs> so, I mean, if, I mean, if we're going to keep talking, I mean, if yeah, we, we want to push it to the next meeting, I'm fine with that. But uh, if we're going to talk about it, I, I have prepared some information which I think would help inform the conversation. That would be nice. I'm, okay. I'm okay as long as you right. I'm okay. I'm okay. To Are you okay? All day, yeah. So. Okay. Cool. So, um, and you got your husband here, so he's okay. Yeah, <laughs> take one of those. Uh, so I think I think one of, one of the clarifications, you know, as we're talking about uh, entrances and gateways, is um, we have a number. We have kind of um, they're really two different things. We have like we have kind Isn't of the, in the same thing. No, no, we have entrances into town, and then we also have, you know, we have commercial corridor gateways. Mm -hmm. And and I think you know, the ones you mapped off here generally and uh, part of the, the generally the areas that you had mapped off in the business district? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Something else is in different. Yeah, this is the the, in, the main entrances into town. Okay. Yeah. And who prepared this? This is great. Yeah. Good job, Andrew. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I need to look at that. 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 Oh, I need
a real quick PowerPoint. Yeah, this is basically what's in front of you. With you know, as I you know, we have really nine entrances uh, into town. You know, based on you know our main corridors: Radford, North Franklin, Pepper's Ferry, uh, Roanoke, Main Street, uh, South Franklin. Uh, but we also have a couple that really need to be considered entrances into downtown, and, and we've taken to that account with our wayfinding signage and our entrance signage uh, as you're getting off of 81 as well. And you see that reflected in in, uh, in number, number 8 and 9. And then I also included 10 as well, which is at the rec center, um, simply because it feels like an entrance into town, <laughs> you know, as people are coming off the bypass. And, and, uh, and so... And, and, and there's a mixture of uh, we, we would we are dealing with with VDOT in a number of these situations, you know, either a mixture of town or VDOT owned property. Um, VDOT maintains the right of way from the rec center to the north corporate line by Merrimack Road. Um, they also maintain a right of way around all of the uh, on ramps and off ramps onto the bypass in 81. Uh, so, so that that is uh, that would be a factor when, whenever we we're starting to plan to do something uh, for for improvements and beautification. So, um, the other map, as I looked at at this, it, we uh, and I think Amanda talked to this a little bit too. Is, you know, how, how does it come back to to the you know to the uh, you know, the um, mission of, of the central business committee and. And, it, you know, it, this is from our website, and I think maybe you and Casey might have looked at this uh, two, two years ago. I wanted yeah. to find out what was it yeah. that we were doing. So it really, you know, the, you know, as it was historically, you know, as it, either it's called central business because it, it was really looking at the central business district downtown. Uh, but it, it has been kind of, it, you know, uh, grown to look at really commercial areas. Uh, and, and you know, here, commercial districts within the town. Well, and right now that you have, right now that you have this off, if you think about it, even the farmers market or whatever, I know we get town council reports and things. Mm -hmm. that as far as here, we don't get them any report. We don't. I, I haven't seen them this year. Oh, they're, but, they're at the last minute. But not the way like they change the times and everything for. For the farmers market and things like that, that didn't even go through here. And talking about, you know, can we have the farmers market downtown several times this year or things mm -hmm. like that? I know that was brought up by me the other time, but that's what we're trying to drive too. We need to be aware of what we're doing with that. Can we help in any way or maybe give some ideas of, you know, let's work together on this and make sure that we we have. Because a farmer's market is great. It's, it's, you're getting together with people and what's your game goal here? Because for, for that, you also have businesses that have, you know, that people can be going to, but you want to make sure that you, you're not also overstepping your boundaries. Um, and Georgina, much about the getting um, Farmers and local vendors approved for the for the voucher program. They have them. Mm -hmm. Do we they, have more than one vendor? I, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. I can I can ask about that for the SNAP program. We can have uh, we can have the farmers market uh, folks back at the next meeting as well. You know, for for another update. Well, and, and I, I want to really see you know if this is a way to send for business, trying to help businesses. How is this helping businesses at the rec center? You know. How can we, you know, maybe it is something about that. I was just going to say, I think that should be more of a focus than, than the entrances to town, for example, because I think that is much more to do with business relations and, and improvements relating to our businesses and, and to the farmer's market. And I think that there is a point in, in, and this is just me being opinionative thing about the town. I love that the town does events. But at what point do we do so much that nobody else can compete with those things? You know what I mean? For Halloween, the mall used to do the Halloween years ago. You know, when you had the kids, you went and door knocked downtown to the businesses, to the things like that or whatever. 
but if the town has a huge amount of money to spend on candy, now where are you going to take your kids to? I'm one of those. I bring them to town hall. It's easy access, and I get a whole bunch of candy, and I don't have to go door knocking. So was was the real point of it, and I'm as guilty as anything of doing that, you know? And I'm just saying, what are the what are the benefits to businesses when we do those things? Because I know that the town is public quality of life is also a job, but at what point are we doing so much that we were maybe losing focus and doing I mean, other town things? Hall, we don't consider it necessarily a special event because that's really more just the departments wanting to be more festive as opposed to like Rock and Main. But I mean, I, I understand Yeah, but do you know, we yeah. did it in conjunction yeah. with it. I mean, I made calls to our downtown businesses and, and coordinated the trick-or-treat trail this past And year. I agree Department. with yeah. that, and I like that. Yeah. But at what point is it easier to come to the downtown to do that just in this closer to the town hall because you got more candy here than other places. So oh. instead of doing that, it will be more so better for me. The way I see the town helping those businesses is, you know what? Ten dollars may not be a lot for the town, but it will be a lot for a business owner. So what about we give them two bags of candy for this event, or we'll give them the candy to provide for this event instead of just providing, you know what I mean? Well, like, I will say one thing. Go ahead. We supply the candy for her giving it yeah. here. Yeah. Just on town hall? Yeah, I did my own. But I think not, a lot of people did their own. But there was money in the budget for candy for the town hall. Yeah, I mean, I, I and I and I'm glad that you guys did that. I don't think that, you know, giving a couple of bags of candy to the businesses would it, it probably would prevent them from getting their own candy, and then they would once they're out of those two bags, be like, we're done, closing up for the night, you know. So yeah. I think it would be better for them to just to do what they're going to do on their own and not have that support from the town, but the town could still help to coordinate it as far as the businesses will still buy the candy and they they will still promote their businesses because they're going to stay open a little later and they're going to have all these new people coming by. Yeah, That's, thank you for coordinating. Yeah, thank you. No, that Thanks, was great. Like, and I, and I, like I said to you, I'm as guilty of that. I mean, and, I, <laughs> and I come with the kids and stuff. But some people like kids coming to their doors. Yeah. I do. You know, but what I'm saying is how can we more emphasize on the businesses too? And I just thought, just with the farmer's market, I just feel like what is our purpose with the farmer's market? I think when you, you know? get a purpose and a plan and a vision, then you prioritize mm -hmm. and you just start chunking it all. Because the reason why you started downtown and the reason why the town sure. started the farmer's market was to bring people to the downtown. The community economic development tool. Yeah. Okay. And so if that's our vision here, mm -hmm. we we need to keep within that vision and make sure that we continue to push on that. Uh, because right now we need to we need to emphasize on what we want to do with this group. Yeah, I mean, when we first started our walking tour today, you suggested that we could be looking at using that part of the parking lot out there on like mm -hmm. a Saturday to do farmers market and have yeah. it still downtown. I like that idea. Yeah, I do. I think that would be great. We have our our space here. That's you know, town town employees aren't here on Saturdays usually, and, and, and the bathrooms are a great thing. You know, having a real bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it definitely I mean, it would help the downtown businesses to have the farmers market come back. Yeah, I definitely. And to have a Saturday market. Saturday and to have market. a Saturday market for sure. Yeah. It did help as well to do that. That's how we started our market there. Mm -hmm. Had it in the downtown in tent um, before the pavilion was actually built. You know, I want These to are the like, conversations I want to have in here. <laughs> and I want to make sure that I'm not I'm mentioning first, I do have an interest. I have a business downtown. I actually have several businesses downtown, so you very well know I have businesses. So before right. I even mention anything about this, I've been very honest. I have business. I, I don't like to say what I have, but I have businesses downtown, and one of the things that I do see is this that maybe the town, when we have the events downtown, reach out to them and say, hey, Chandelier, hey, baking for lovers, instead of closing today at 12 o'clock, we'll give you the frontage of not just the sidewalk, but the frontage where the, the road is to have tents or 
throw whatever you want to do to display out there outside the quarters and maybe it requires to close one more street to allow that street up to uh, you know the baking is for lovers or maybe is how can you work with those businesses so you make the the footprint a little bit larger without killing their business too but obviously asking for permission first uh, if that's something that they will be willing to do because i think it's important when you have downtown businesses that you talk to the business owners and say, hey, we're going to have this event these days. How can you participate? Yeah. And maybe that will open the door for them to be open later and maybe get more business. Is there anything that goes out to business owners to keep them abreast of the functions or other than what's on the website? Or no, we well we we do we do talk to them, to, yeah 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 we do talk to the business owners you know as far as closures but but it's something that no I think it's just alluding to you know we probably need to do more you know as exactly as, right. as, so as Amanda's it, been talking to different businesses it, that's something that's come up yeah, yeah and one of your questions that was on here was when you when you asked what are we doing well and what are we not doing well one of the things that I heard in talking to downtown businesses that we're not doing well from the town's perspective is communicating when those road closures are going to happen and you know how is that going to yeah how is that going to affect their business and that sort of thing so the expectation I think I don't know if it was an expectation but previously I think that it was sort of uh, thought that the businesses are aware of what's going on because it's like out there on social media and everywhere else, but those businesses aren't looking at our social media pages and that's what they're telling me. So I brought that information back and said we need to do a better job at communicating. Well, not only so. It's a big issue yeah. and we want to be business friendly, you know, not opposing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed, and and yeah. that's why I was pointing at Andrew because I don't know what was ha- what happened for communication before I have come. Yeah. I just know that that's mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what well, happened. It, well, I know that for, yeah, that's what what I've heard. Yeah, I know <laughs> that before I took any ownership on Angle Floors, there wasn't, and there were events that took place even the weekends of Mother's Day weekend, which is one of the biggest sales of the year, and the horrible environment that was created within the business trying to figure out how do you deliver all these flowers in a weekend that is so is one of the busiest ones for that for that type of business. So how can we work with those businesses communicating that information is a very key factor. Mm-hmm. And that can affect them in many different ways, you know? Yeah. I definitely think Yeah uh, and I think a good example of that was the county not really communicating that they were going to blast that building down, mm-hmm. you know, and how that affected some. I heard some people, you know, who. Yeah. I mean, we, um, we we do let folks know about closures and yeah. when they were going to happen, but I do think that uh, what we're hearing is maybe that we could do a better job. Yeah, and, and and we give you know if we could give them you know a few months notice or you know to, to say hey th- these are the events that are coming up and, and how can you participate that a little bit yeah. better how can yeah. you participate cuz they are yeah. you know and i think i think different events lend itself to different participation you know depending on the and footprint of the event too. maybe yeah. we do some like you know for some of the events like some or front decor contest or some mm-hmm. you know, really good things idea. of that nature to get them competing to make things look nicer yeah you know, that would give some visual interest. That's a great idea. That is a really fun time. Maybe with the festivals, connect that with the festivals of the team. Sometimes they have a name for each of the, the events and stuff. Um, definitely connect them with right. that. Well, I know DCI does, you know, they, they work with the local businesses to try to get them involved. And, and so does Wilderness, you know, the Kiwanis and such. But there is so much yes. this group yeah. so people can do. And there's a lot that we can also do. Help. There's probably a lot more that we can do with DCI because DCI has a lot more volunteers now than they have ever had. So, you know, and, and just trying to give them the ideas of, of what we would like to see happen. They would love to hear that kind of information and, and I'm sure, you know, rally the business together to do something like that. Sorry, Reddy, you kept trying to get something, mm-hmm. a word in edgewise there. That's what was okay. it? <laughs> oh, I think. <laughs> Did they have to mention how they wanted to...
Yeah, yeah, right, right, and I think that that's part of it as well. Yeah, it's, it's some people, you know, like I think the dance studio folks are fine with emails, and you know, but uh, but the gentleman at the antique shop, I think you need to he spend would time with him. A, a, yeah. a letter, yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. a mail letter. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Um, I think that's really the best thing because that way they're hearing it, they're seeing it, right. and then we know that they've gotten the message. Right. Yeah. And maybe Mr. Simon yeah. will change his mind. Mr. Simon. Same. I thought you said Simonis. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I get them all. Mr. Simmons. We're here to help you. Yeah. Because, you know, most people have the other image of the government. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can, you know, talk to this nonprofit. How great it would be to do this. That, that helped the most with, like, before. If you, you have to set aside time. But, you know, uh, being able to, to talk to those people and hand them a uh, uh, letter with that schedule mm -hmm. of, of closures or something and, and have space to talk to where they can answer questions really helps a lot mm -hmm. and means a lot to people who might have some concerns. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, and, you know, business owners talk to other business owners. So when, when you're looking to place your business somewhere, you know, they're mm -hmm. going to go to people who have been there previously mm -hmm. for information. And we hope when they're talking about the town that the information they get is positive. Oh, of course. You know, that yeah. makes an impact. So mm -hmm. um, I've started several businesses in my lifetime. and. If I had have known everything up front, I never would have got started. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, most people never start business out of fear. Mm -hmm. And we know that most businesses um, you know, don't endure forever. So it's a scary thing. And um, you know, the fact that you're there given what I feel is real support, um, I think is a, a definite benefit. Right, exactly, and I think that that's, that that was council's, you know, one of their primary objectives with with having the, you know, Amanda and the Small Business Solutions Program is to to have, have that positive image of the town that we are we are looking to provide information, we are looking to to provide opportunity, to, to, you know, in, in, to show show what's available. Yeah. Many people actually follow through when you when you bring them information and things like that. And you should ask. I have lots of statistics I'm about to be preparing <laughs> to send to you folks for my year now that I've been here, <laughs> because I went back and did a year you know review of how many clients I've worked with, what types of businesses they were in, were they brand new startups versus existing businesses. I have all of the details of what they came in originally asking for. I have the statistics about how many new businesses have started that came in with just an idea to meet with me. Um, and it might be a spoiler, but there might be pie charts involved. So. <laughs> there might be pie charts. <laughs> so stay tuned. I want, I want, I want to provide all of that detail for you because I think cool. it will be interesting for you to see. Um, the impact because before with the SBDC, there was never ever um, information that was forthcoming about who they were serving or what was really being done. And now, with me here, I can provide that information. I mean, without even saying I mean, who I I'm helping specifically. I know you're keeping track of what you're doing, but do you? Is there a way to go back in history and do a comparison to from to my, one year of mine to the next? Oh, there will be yes. Yeah, I mean, from before so I came. Prior. I we don't have any detail before I came because the SBDC all they ever did was tell us how many clients they served in Christiansburg. So for I can compare that. They did 60 clients the year before I came on board, and I did 60 clients in my first year. So it, it's exactly the same. And but I can tell you more about what those 60 clients needed and what kind of help they got and that kind of thing. Where the other 60 before me before me coming on board. Yeah. I have no idea what. Yeah, I mean they they, they could they could tell us the codes, um, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, but it was it was very broad. Yeah, uh, the the, the different I forget what they're called, but the the, the different federal codes. Yeah. yeah. Right.
very general. Yeah. So what do you guys think about that, that whole thing of what can we do right. to make the biggest impact? Yeah, so so to to kind of continue with that thought and looking at it, it, you know, if it were going to be more consistent with, you know, with, with the, the mission of central business, then it would be more probably, you know, looking at some of the gateways, but a lot of the gateways are in residential areas. Uh, but looking at these the six commercial areas, uh, these these are, and, and they align well, I think, with, you know, kind of incorporating, you know, maybe different sections that Amanda has, but kind of, in the same areas, you know, looking at the uptown area, midtown area, um, you know, Roanoke Street, uh, two two sections of Roanoke Street, really Main Street and Radford, and um, <laughs> do we need and so, any land so right now we, we yeah we we do have uh, well just the you know the, the acreage at the park and we have a, a small well, property I mean, off of but like in the Boulevard. mediums or any yeah we are, so um, we own. Uh, some of the media that would be part of the tri uptown would be very tricky because of VDOT working with VDOT because they would control anything on North Franklin and anything around Arbor Drive and where where Lowe's is off of Peppers Ferry Road. We but we would control the rest. Yeah. And um, will they allow us to do the work if it was nothing that they had to we, do? We would have to. Well, uh, that's tricky, you know, because they maintain it. And so uh, we would have to have some sort of agreement that we're we're willing to take over the maintenance and the cost of that. Um, and that's that's probably a, a larger council conversation at, at some point. You know, if we when we get to the to that point. So, uh, but but if we were going to look at it, it's like where where would we want to focus first? Mm -hmm. You know, what sections? Uh, and I, I'm not saying that decisions would need to be made like tonight, one, but actually. we would need to. You know, start to think about it, and then what kind of model would you be looking at? We have a landscaping program that's probably been in place for 15 to 20 years, and we have uh, one group that has done it. It's Foresight. It used to be Gay and Neal, and they pay $500 each year uh, for us to maintain that landscaping area. And are there other opportunities so around for us to do it. that? We do it. They right. just provide the money. The money. And is that, is that something that we would want to push? You know, there's another landscaping area along I actually like the, that uh, idea. the Midtown area. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I do you feel this way? Yeah, I mean, I just feel not? like it's like yeah. the impact of it is not. Yeah. It's well, not it is advertising. Yeah. I mean, you know how many times yeah. I see I mean, that sign? I, I think it's a happened to this committee. And he's always, and I don't know if it's because I knew it was there or what is it, but it makes you look at it, even though it's small. You know, yeah. I think because you look at the landscape. Sorry, I don't want to. No, no, no. I understand. Yeah, it's, 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 it's different than what is different than the normal size. Can we do different rates as far as like maybe different sec like smaller oh. sections and stuff like that, like advertisement yeah. or the spots and the and the gateways. I mean, we would have to. Tell, I mean, I, I'd have to do quite a bit of digging uh, on this program and kind of because it was really two town managers ago that kind of headed this program up and in talking with Randy we you know he doesn't even know much information about it and he knows pretty you know a lot about the town you know the program. By the wayside, now, just I, I just thought maybe it wasn't marketed as well yeah you know at the time or you know it, but I would like to go back and just see how, how it was formed and yeah. you know I mean all of these things yeah. collectively kind of layer on top of each other and you know and finally if you have enough layers yeah. You get to where you want to be. It's it's all important, but some of it, of course, has higher priority than other things. Mm -hmm. so, I, I mean, to me, I like to figure out what's the vision, what's the plan, and what's the priorities, and then you go from there. Mm -hmm. You know, you start with off and work your way down. So I don't know if you're there yet. I don't know if we're there yet, but. I think with a couple of meetings, we can get a really good idea of what that looks like, you know, and have a direction to start directing. I see the value in this. I just don't think it's high on my priority list. I mean, like I said, it's a layer, and it's, yeah. you know, perhaps is not the top three. Um. But I can tell you, it can 
do a different thing if you really wanted to. For example, a business owner may be able to spend $200. They may not be able to spend $1,000, mm -hmm. but $200 will go a long way if it's advertisement. And if you can advertise, and I can, I was just telling her, I know that sign and I see it all the time. I mean, even if the thing is fixed or not fixed, you see the sign. Mm -hmm. So you may see the sign before you see any landscaping done, and I think it should be better, but whatever, but you still see the sign and that's the point. And if the sign makes you remember the business, a lot of it is repetition. And if you still remember that, you know, it's like the candle store or a, a gift place, like for example, the bandana, orange bandana or whatever. I know it's not down here, it's, a, it's still a business, but you know, if she had something like that somewhere and she paid $200 and the town did the, the rest, you know, and there was a small sign somewhere in the medium that says the, the, get your gifts there. I mean, the next time you need a gift, guess what? You're going to remember that. I'll remember it. And so, I don't know. I think. So, so I'm, I'm hearing I that we, we'd like to investigate that, the, the, that existing program that's and, been and around. And do a, for a matching, while. kind of like doing and, the matching grant. look at. Yeah, potentially how, how do we, how we modernize it. Because it is an advertisement it. opportunity. Yeah. It is a matching for, I mean, $200 for having a sign there year-round. That's a bargain. It's, not it's nothing. It, it, I yeah. mean, I think it should be Maybe more than that. a collective of business. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, uh, yeah, I mean, well, I can tell you, we're, we're spending more than that. Because, because if your game goal, because if your game goal is to do, the, and that's what we're saying, our direction with the money that we have, if it wasn't all used for the say, grants that are not being used stuff right now, and if we had $20,000 to provide, you know, let's per se the town goes in $500 and all the business owner had to do 200 that will go a long way. And now you have a, this a small piece of land that is getting fixed up with flowers or maybe tulips or maybe something that makes the town different than everybody else, and all of a sudden you're changing the landscape. Well, I like the idea of the landscape being changed. I don't like the idea of seeing a ton of those little signs everywhere. I think it would make it look ugly. I don't know. I think I'm and I think I think if we you know, opened up the facade grant to more buildings, so newer buildings that are in bad shape, that more, the more beautification of the buildings might draw more businesses in. Like what are you talking about? Which buildings? Buildings that are not well, that are younger than of, 50 years old. A lot of buildings that didn't meet the last criteria. Because of their age. Because of their age. 50. But the, no, the last one was 25. Because no, remember, 50. was it 50? It yeah. Was I proposed going to 25 that. in the next round, but oh. it was 50 years old and older buildings in the last round. And there were a lot of buildings that would benefit from the facade grant program that didn't qualify because of their age. Can you give me like 10 of them right now? Since there's only uh, four applicants for the last one. Last well, round. Right, right. Could I off the top of my head give you 10? Probably not. But I could prepare something to give to you. Yeah. And do you think they'll be willing to do that? I think there's a lot of people that are interested in taking advantage of the facade grant. I just presented yesterday uh, um, at the Chamber of Commerce and the businesses in the room said they were a huge fan of the facade grant program. And I'd hate to see it go away completely to do something like this. Well, no, this will be in yeah. correlation with something else that we may do. We may well, not my, do my understanding is this, we, we'd want to try to get it cost neutral by look, looking at it again, you know, from whether it's you know the investment of the initial landscape and, then, and I know we haven't really talked about this but that, those were my thoughts you know that that I, I did not see you know the in my mind the facade grant in this program were you know I don't know if other people were thinking differently but we're, we're completely you know different questions you know if, if, if one if you decide to go forward with one doesn't mean you Decided to go forward with the other. I mean, at least in my mind, it wasn't what one. Would you, what would you like, like the other paid for? So I think it would be a matter of going back and looking at, you know, how this program was set up and seeing, you know, would, would it be more than $500? <coughs> There'd be the initial investment of the landscaping materials and then and then labor, uh, initial, you know, higher cost for labor first for planning and such. 
and then and then maybe maybe you know the, now it's probably be about seven hundred to to eight hundred dollars I would imagine for us to put maybe twenty to thirty hours worth of uh, of man hours, you know, uh, on on a bed each year, you know, depending on what we have to do. But I mean, we, I'd, we'd need to kind of look through. But then, and, you know, too, I mean, there is a yeah, lot of, and um, yeah. 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 and yeah. I mean, yeah. these are all yeah. ideas yeah. that are coming out of this, and maybe my ideas, or it may not be where they need to be because there is a lot of things that can go with this too. You know, what kind of businesses do you really want to push? Because it's like what she was saying today. What was her name? Chris. 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 It's like what she was saying today. Yeah, you can do advertisement for this, and there is no problem. I cannot really tell you a lot of businesses getting lawyers and 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 things like that downtown. That's not a big deal. But the type of businesses that you want down there, and so let's first say real estate offices. I can tell you from my experience. Nobody goes there. When you have a realtor working for you, the chances are you'll never see them at their office. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these office buildings that are downtown right now, even, I mean, there's a lot. And are they doing what they are, what the building should be designed to be doing for, for, for the town? You know, what you want businesses to come to. People are going that direction. They're not coming in this direction. And so... If we have these entryways and we allow these businesses to have, and I'm just saying because I'm a realtor too, but I can just say, well, I spend a thousand, three thousand dollars sometimes some month advertisement. That's a lot of money. This five hundred dollars will be nothing. You know, when when you go too much for that, you know, but maybe for a bakery store, that five hundred dollars is all they can afford. Three thousand dollars would be like hell no, you know. So now all of a sudden you have realtor, 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 and like she's saying, you'll have a whole bunch of signs. What's your purpose? You know, is it the beautification of it, or is it just advertisement? I I am trying to look at it from my perspective. How can we draw those businesses that we want through those gateways, and how can we do it in a consistency way that what we want the town to look like first, and second of all, what do we want to come to the town? I, I don't know, strategically, I cannot put words into that. So, I know what I want. I want the town to be, look beautiful, and I want people to come to the downtown to do many things, you know, um, walk and go to shops and go to boutiques and go to restaurants and the ice cream shop and go to have these great experiences. How do we get there by even fixing the entryways to your town? And and maybe that what I'm saying doesn't make any sense, but do you, do you see what I'm trying to say? Yes, but I'm just looking at it from an, an incentive kind of direction more than the access points, because I don't think the access points are what are going to draw people. It's what's here that's going to draw people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and there is a small factor into that as far as like the entryway too, but but it's an eye catching. For me, I love ours. The entrances are important. You know, you know when we had the issues out here on Roanoke Street. I mean, every time I drove through to downtown, I thought this is a horrible way to invite businesses to to, her, to Christiansburg. It, you know, it just. It was what it was. Is it better now? It is better now. Yes. Oh, you mean with the, with the paving of the yeah, sure, yeah. you know, but that I mean, painful. and that being said, <laughs> it is important. The roads are important. Yes. The look is important. Mm -hmm. The critical mass of the right types of businesses are important. It's all important, but you have to have a plan and you have to have priorities, mm -hmm. yeah. so you have a place to start. The, so the look for me going. Otherwise, you're going to be yeah. yeah you're not going to be getting a lot done. Yeah. Yeah. I guess for me, it's important. It's, it's the draw of what I'm going to. Like I, I don't quite care so much about what I'm driving by to get to where I'm going. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, it's the draw of where I'm headed. I, yeah. I am visual too and my husband and I will go to Blacksburg even though it's in the middle of a college town because we like to drive to Salem. I love to drive to Salem. 
like the downtown, the work that they have done to their facets and to their farmer's market and things like that. Those are things that drive us there. And all of a sudden, my husband is like, let's move to Salem almost every day. Like, and they really cared about their looks. They really want to, you know. And so I want, I want not just my husband, I want people to feel that feeling, that they want to come to a town that looks beautiful and that has places to go to. So just a few thoughts. So we have 16 areas that have been identified. And so I think getting to the point of what, what do we want to focus on and really start to make an impact? Because if we did one thing in these 16 areas, then then we're really not making the impact. So maybe that's something to think about for the next meeting, and then I can do some additional research on the uh, on the adopt a uh, median area and identify other medians that could be candidates for for this as well. Was it you that said, or was it Amanda that said one of the two that uh, some of these areas uh, were in residential areas. So, so if that are, was the yeah. answer, I want to off. start, yeah, let's yeah, take okay. those out completely sure. for now mm -hmm. and then emphasize on the ones that are the entryways for your central businesses. Okay. And, and, and if you have an answer, which ones are the most important ones right now that you think may be important that will really help too? Yeah, I, I think it's a matter of just kind of looking at it maybe over the next month, if, uh, you know, if you're out and about and just it's kind of taking a look at Radford Street and say, hmm, what, what could we do, you know, at Harmon, uh, you know, in, uh, in, in that, that area. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, that, 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 that's one gateway. More of like or, or West Main Street, you know, what, you know with, with the new emergency room happening and right there at the corner of Moose. And, uh, that really you know, means what, what, what can you do there? You know, and, <laughs> and there's opportunities. We could, do, we could do some landscaping in front of, uh, you know, in front of our sign. I think we, we have enough space and we could do that. I, um, I am all for 100% yeah. on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <right. laughs> you don't have to talk but, but, more. Yeah. That one is like, yes. Because especially because it's on the other side of your downtown. Yeah, but it would be really good worldwide. for staff to be able to prioritize those so that we know, yes, these are these are the items that Well, and I think a lot really, of it really is because if you're on. welcoming to your downtown, and a lot of people, as you very well know, they do go to Ploy. They, they love that experience. I go to Ploy all the time, at least once a month. Uh, there is just a, a, I wish that Pixaria was here, you know, whatever they have up there with, the second floor or whatever. I just love that. Uh, the one with the park on the back. But um, I would love to have that those people that are going over there and coming this way to see, wow, Tinklin Farms is a great opportunity. You know, hundreds of people from Blacksburg come through Christiansburg, and they don't even get on 460 or 81 to be able to access those points. They come through the downtown and then they come back through the downtown. <coughs> so it's an upstairs pizzeria I need to recruit to Christiansburg? <laughs> I think, yeah, I think, I think I, I'm seeing like people <laughs> you know, coming in for eye entry and depending on where the food truck is, you know, people are following, you know, so it is a matter of, yeah, what, you know, rec recognizing the task. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, the, uh, How hard is it to have, yeah. um, um, this may not be a question, but just a question overall. Rooftop, is it really hard to get them to go through, like maybe is it planning or anything like that? What do they need to, to be? Because we're not the only building that has a flat top, uh, roof. Mm -hmm. Most of the buildings around here do have, especially downtown. Yeah. Is that yeah. a way to... The Christmas store actually has a parking lot on top, mm -hmm. you know, which has been talked about. Could you do events up there? You know, which would be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. You know. No yeah. The it's like a, a build, more like a building, a special Right. Yeah. No, that, that's structure. the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Structure, yeah. structural, um, structural, and. Mm -hmm. um, and then also access. Coding. That sounds like money to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, it could be, it might not be. I mean, right. there's already access on the on the roof. That would be interesting to look at. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is a lot of buildings downtown that have the plot. Again, you look and you see opportunity everywhere, a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, there is a lot of potential, but then how to get there 
you know, there's the that's that. having the plan and the vision. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we're kind of good, good on this. I think I have my marching orders, mm -hmm. you know, and if you all want to just kind of take a look over the next month. Well, we that. do need to meet soon, probably in the next two weeks. Um, I, I think that's, that's going to be tough for staff, you know, yeah, to be able to turn some good quality information around for you in, in a short period of time. Uh, um, three weeks? Okay. I would recommend it, you know, the, keep it, keeping with the mind. I love what uh, Kim did. I really like this. Um, yeah. So, Maybe we can answer some of her questions and really okay. think about it. I have a question. Do you want to add to that that I didn't think of? I think I have. I, I, you have a lot of answers for what I read through already. So. And other people. Got your mm -hmm. yeah. well, if I can't answer, he can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so for next meeting, yeah, I think we, we would want to talk. Things down, you know, and the, a priority. I mean, I don't know how far you guys have come with planning or any, you know, the clue what you've done. So. Yeah, well, we could share some, some, we could share some of that as well. A, yeah. And yeah, if you have a, a quick answer, Amanda, about ideas, discussions, including business involvement from all sides of town, uh, do you have any solutions on that? Um, not that I've prepared for right now. Okay. But we can talk about it at the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I like that you're talking and meeting people. I think this meeting is adjourned unless you have any questions. Oh my gosh, I lost. Sure. And uh, we'll, I'll pull together a draft, you know, so please, you know, if you have any thoughts or say, no, I, I don't, you know, this, this isn't as much of a priority as we want a farmer's market update or, you know, we do want to talk about, um, you know, uh, the business inventory questions and uh, and, and I, I, I mean I'll go ahead and put that on the agenda. I do think it's important okay. about discussions about the farmers market. I think maybe you should look at the agenda. This is my recommendation and and take your top three items and say these are the really important things that we need to focus on first. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think today we're just all over the place trying to find out, especially after you do a walk and and you just see. Like, there were a couple of things I had no clue about. Yeah, I appreciate mm -hmm. you bearing oh. with me through that. It, it was helpful for me to be able to do I that. I know that the downtown mm -hmm. is not very big, but um, just realizing once more again about what can we do to work with, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, make, maybe make Yeah, and we didn't walk through downtown park, because I do think that that's a really nice, the storyboard through there, you know, that's, oh, that's a nice, really yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be great. Yeah. It's great. I'll take you for a walk so we won't take their time. <laughs> Amanda walks every day. Okay. Great. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you all. Thank you guys for everything. Thank you.